I'm here with Dr. Salisu Dahiru of the National Change Council. Um, he is a scientist, master's degree in cytogenetics and plant breeding, and a PhD in environmental resources uh, from the University of Jos and the University of Nassara, respectively. Thank you so very much for being here and taking the time. Now, I want to um, use this opportunity to bring back this question or that was raised or the um, topic that was raised before uh, for hydrogen um, economy being a potential for Africa now from Nigeria the most populous country in the continent what are your thoughts when uh, when you hear that is that the potential that uh, must be looked at uh, thank you very much um, Nigeria being an oil producing country um, it's also one of the countries with the large you know um, uh, gas reserves um, we've also put in place uh, an energy transition plan uh, which is also the first of its kind in, in, in Africa which is very ambitious um, with a view to addressing two major issues in Nigeria. One is the energy hunger or energy poverty because um, the population uh, in Nigeria, which is over 200 million, you have just maybe about 30, 40 percent that have um, access to, to, to energy. And we also need to, to industrialize. So uh, this energy transition plan is hinged on the use of natural gas as a transition fuel for the time being. However, we see vast opportunities in the light of uh, current development, both in Europe and in the other parts of the world, on the need to really transit a little bit faster uh, towards uh, um, renewables and then also looking at hydrogen to provide in, uh, as, as the main um, uh, end energy resource uh, for, for, the, for the future. So um, we, we are also um, tagging along and also uh, have um, arrangements, part of which is the reason why we're attending the, uh, the, 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 this particular dialogue, is to explore the opportunities that um, we can have with uh, the German government and German enterprises and investors and innovators uh, in the area of, um, of, of, of green hydrogen. Now, what role does the Nigerian government play, though? We've had uh, President Mohamedou Buhari approving a work plan for the National Council on Climate Change a few weeks ago, which you are uh, working for. And what are the key actions you are taking to ensure that Nigeria meets the goals of reducing the greenhouse emissions um, by 45 percent, which was the goal, by 2030? So what is the role of uh, Nigeria in this conversation? OK, quickly on that, uh, actually, it's um, reducing it by 47 percent because it has been updated. In okay. 2021. Um, yes, you know, um, Nigeria is, is so uh, complex, very large, and one of the countries in the world that is blessed with all the five ecoclimatic zones. Down south, we have the rainforest, we have the mangroves followed by the rainforest, and then somewhere around the middle, you have the Guinea savanna, and then towards the end, you have the Sahel, and we also have the desert. So, our climate change response is so unique that we need to have a response that addresses the peculiarity of the country. And therefore, the need to have a centralized organ that is going to be providing leadership as well as uh, the right decision-making apparatus is also established. So the National Council on Climate Change was uh, put in place as a result of an act of the parliament through the passage of a law known as the Climate Change Act 2021, which the president approved. So the establishment of the National Council is actually in response or an implementation of that particular act. And it places emphasis now on one central coordination and then also making it uh, situated within the presidency so that it gets the necessary uh, executive powers as well as the legal framework to be able to be all encompassing, particularly looking at the fact that the energy transition plan, which is one of our major pathways leading to us meeting our net zero target of 2060, is to be driven by the private sector. And then without an, an ideal um, legal framework that governs the infrastructure and also the modalities and the regulations, uh, then we'll not be able to, to, to advance. So that's uh, where we are as far as uh, the uh, ETP and then the response to 
uh, climate change uh, is, is happening in Nigeria. Could you outline a concrete action that you have to make this happen? Okay. Um, you know, with, 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 with a new organization that is established uh, in a country like Nigeria, which is maybe, uh, developing, so not yet on the same level with, say, Germany, you have to go through some, some cycles, beginning with some teething problems. Uh, so stage one, the action that we've, we've put in place are divided into two subgroups. One, to quickly institutionalize and make the council operational and functional. And then to look at what are those provisions that are contained in the act, which have mandated the council to implement on a day-to-day -day basis and for which the council is going to be held accountable. One, it is the development of a five-year cycle of climate change action plan for the country. Two, we establish a carbon budget for the country that tends to identify all the sources of emissions and also identify the potential sinks where this have to be done. And then to have in place a framework for carbon trading or emissions trading in the country that will harness these projects and the potential carbon emissions reduction certificates that will be associated with these projects for the carbon trading. And then to also have in place a carbon tax system, which is also an aspect of this implementation arrangement. But particularly, more important is the implementation of the energy transition plan, which cuts across various a strata of government, various MDAs, and also the, the different levels, whether it is federal, state, or the local government. You just said that uh, Nigeria is not a country like Germany, um, which brings me to the next question. In 2021, in the capital of um, Abuja, Nigeria, the German-Nigerian Hydrogen Office was established. Um, goal was to explore more of the opportunities within a global hydrogen economy. I want to know, especially because we've been talking about this I-level cooperation, how does this play into the outlook of the production of green hydrogen in Nigeria in combination with this cooperation with the state of Germany? which you said is different than Nigeria. Uh, thank you very much. I d in fact, one of the other major objective and reasons for us to attend this dialogue is to not only participate and listen to other discussions, but to hold bilaterals with the high-level uh, German government officials. And our delegation is also led by the Minister for Power, and we were able to have uh, a very robust discussions uh, this morning with the Minister of State, uh, Jennifer Morgan, uh, which, was, which also dwelt heavily on the Germany-German-Nigerian uh, cooperation for the uh, green hydrogen. We also had opportunities to um, uh, interface with various uh, German enterprises under the leadership of one entity called the uh, Atmosphere, which is here uh, in Germany that has uh, invented a save 80 fuel efficient cook stove. Uh, because for Nigeria, a lot of the emissions, apart from the industrial sector, also comes from home cooking as well as um, energy, energy consumption in the homes. And we felt that uh, because this cooking is also relying heavily on wood-based energy sources, whether in the form of firewood or charcoal, or even to a large extent, um, uh, some of the associated um, uh, biomass that, are, that we are getting from, from, from the forest, and has led to a situation whereby Nigeria happens to be one of the countries with the highest deforestation rates in the world. And so addressing... Uh, climate change for Nigeria will definitely, definitely hinge on the kind of support and collaboration that we'll be getting from uh, our partnership uh, with, 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 with the Germany, uh, both at the governmental level and also at the, at the private sector level. When you say robust in the conversation, what does that mean? Sorry? The, you had a robust conversation. Um... Yeah, very productive, meaning that we deep-dived into... Um, the role that Nigeria is expecting Germany to, to, to lead 
uh, you know, the the uh, uh, ETP um, expects is um, expects to be implemented with um, uh, an amount, you know, in the range of uh, 10 billion dollars annually, and the G7 uh, through the um, uh, Just Energy Transition Partnership, led actually by Germany, has succeeded in supporting countries such as South Africa, Indonesia, and now we are even hearing that the next tranche uh, is looking in the direction of uh, small countries. I, I, beg, my, uh, I beg my pardon, uh, like, like Syria alone, but Nigeria offers a very big, huge opportunity. Um, for, for 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 investment in this in this in this area, and we have this um, vast amount of uh, gas, and we want the gas to to be leveraged upon, you know, to provide from gas to blue hydrogen, and then eventually to green hydrogen, and the details of um, what we'll be discussing uh, have been agreed upon, and. Um, uh, the uh, the ministers has also agreed to to, to have a joint uh, working group uh, between uh, uh, Germany and Nigeria that will follow up on these discussions so that um, by the next uh, COP and also uh, in the next uh, uh, Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue we should be able to announce it with a big bang. Thank you very much, Dr. Salisuda Hero, speaking about the cooperation of Nigeria and Germany when it comes to moving to a more sustainable energy via hydrogen. Thank you very, very much for being a guest here.